Trust in Dreams is an exhibition that reclaims the money grab gone wrong. Taking place in the upper two levels of a three level mascot dwelling which was abandoned due to concerns regarding toxic waste underground. Each artist individually addresses the way capitalism and western culture have imposed on their life and their personal retaliation to these forces. English artist Sophie Van Cantor's practice is loaded with a visual language developed from the everyday on the streets. Pedro Navaja is unobscured. The concept is potent and displayed in an approachable manner. The wound is the place where the light enters, surrounds a hand plunging a knife into the surface, which is flanked by older wounds full of a warming yellow. It is in line with the idea that damage caused by living in the intense environment we do is the starting point to pushing back. Balance is another artist reclaiming their emotional response to events in the world as ammunition. Another English artist, Daisy Paris, creates large-scale oil paintings full of power. I Feel Everything is one of many paintings Paris has made, exploring the spectrum of human emotion felt and seen daily. Using public encounters combined with her own experiences, she homes in on the extreme ferociousness and realness of feelings. She uses bright contrasting colours with an explosive gestural brushstroke, contained by a painted border to perfectly achieve the sense of burning up with strong emotions. Society constantly encourages us to enter organised structures, to work towards someone else's business goal with our values determined by our usefulness for someone else. Paris does an excellent job of liberating the viewer through realising the power of their own emotions. By authentically putting her soul into her paintings, she lets us know that these emotions felt as a result of a cold corporate world are also the key as aspect of answering back. Australian artist Charlotte Owingham, a woman of Wiradjuri country, is the exhibiting artist who has lost most to the influences of the Western world, her culture. Allingham creates imagery often to do with Indigenous Australians defending their rights. They are set in modern times incorporating traditional face paints and weapons. The characters are also wearing hip clothing with Indigenous markings on them. This is highly successful in connecting modern Indigenous persons with their rich history which has been attacked by Western civilization. Furthermore, a strong use of animals and the occult magnifies the connection between indigenous persons of the land and all inhabitants in a language understood by all. In Dargan, you can see an indigenous woman flanked by native flora and fauna with traditional symbolism surrounding her. Five hands come from behind her and look set to rip her away from where she's situated in perfect harmony. It is a strong and simple visual language. Framed with current condition, Allingham's pieces looks at the cruel hand of Western culture, colonisation and capitalism from the last 200 years to now and forms a personal response positioned in modern conditions. Geordie Kerwick is an emerging Australian artist who works closely with colour and texture while looking to strip a subject down to its truest form. Kerwick's still lives are emphasised on a handful of objects allowing them to sit boldly and proudly within paintings without any collusion from insignificant objects. Orchid Perspective is comprised of a pictish book or CD, Helter Skelter DVD, an illicit powder, razor blade and an orchid. This is suggestive of a niche scene, but more importantly states what type of items Kerwick believes are intrinsic to the essence of it being human. He often incorporates books and records with different contents. To continuously choose these objects clearly states what Kerwick believes the true human experience is. The downtime. These are rich human experiences that we are often told we are too busy for amongst work, union, appointments, responsibility and commitments. American artist Hunter Potter makes paintings that emphasise memorable moments in Potter's day-to-day -day life and childhood, often overlooked. His ability to register these moments as meaningful illuminates what it means to be organically human. 
as we respond overwhelmingly positively to an event generally considered insignificant in the economic, financially driven consumer landscape. The body of work surrounding Up and Vanished explored characterization from his blue collar Americana upbringing. His quest for meaning in the mundane life of others is reflective of his own attempt to locate himself in the defined and categorised landscape of working class culture. Instead, through the work, it becomes evident he finds meaning between all the definitions. This bright aerosol and brush-based painting alludes to a hunter in the forest. However, there is no guns or animals, just the bust of a hunter surrounded by nature, represented mystically. It becomes clear the painting is much more about a moment of clarity and happiness experienced by the hunter in between whatever he was doing. Australian artist Rachel McCulley's practice is influenced by the overlooked beauty of the everyday. She has a focus on everyday tranquility, which is used to create a grounding and empowering experience for the viewer within the naturally hectic pace of the modern world. Household Totems by Idle Hands 3 is an organic stack of items discarded by her kids inside, interpreted after it had been abandoned. It alludes to traces of fast-paced life, but is completely embodied by a calming sense with her neutral palette and balanced composition. Her object selection is crucial. In society where one's kids or home is often touted as their biggest accomplishment, Macaulay skillfully uses generic objects with connections to her kids to establish a larger inquiry into the human experience. It is playful and contemplative work which realises the importance of small, calming and grounding moments for humans in a frantic society. Furthermore, this day is suggestive of an ill-fitting relationship between society and its inhabitants. It's my way to the other side.